Hey, 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 over here. Remember this face? Say hello. Smoothie Girl, Eleni. <laughs> it's Smoothie Girl. How are we going, everybody? Now, yesterday I t started to talk about separating these two plants in the one pot and I went off into a tangent talking about weeds. And what I'm doing here now is just working my way through carefully. I need to separate, well, I need to establish where the roots are before I separate it, because I can just easily do this, right? More than likely, one of the two will snap. I reckon the fig would snap if I pulled it really hard like that. I can cut straight down the center if I like with my saw and just do this and whatever happens, my chances are or my luck would be that one of the main roots are running through there. It's like an artery. You cut through that, you kill the plant. Now I know fig trees and olive trees are pretty tough and resilient and forgiving, but you know, spend an extra five minutes. Well, I'm not going to take five minutes to do this because we have the magic of editing. Nearly there folks. Working at it. Now this one here, this plant, these two plants here were given to me. I've been given a lot of plants over the years. Uh, these ones are from a family friend who grows everything in pots. Well, he, well, when he propagates in pots, he uses sandy loam. This is soil from his garden. You know, I know I've said it a hundred times, a million times I suppose, don't use garden soil in your pots. You know, some of the potting mix I've used in the past have been pretty average too, so you know, I reckon the garden soil could be better. The, uh, the compost that we have there is pretty good, actually. I find that to be really successful. But I didn't, you can soak the whole root ball, if you want, in a big bucket or a tub of water to loosen it up. And it's ideal when you've got, you know, matted roots, you know, when it's wrapped all the way around. This one here, you can see it's not wrapped around, so it's not pot bound. It just needs, you know, a bit of time and attention and sort of work your thumb and fingers through there to break away the soil without tearing the roots up. You don't want to tear these up. These aren't very colourful roots. I like them to be a little bit brighter than that. Sort of that colour there, whiteness. And that's a healthier root system, but it's because it's been in this ground or this pot for a while and it's sandy soil and all the above. We're nearly there. Look at that. So you can soak them in the, in the big tub to help loosen it up. But if it's loose like this, you shouldn't have a problem now. It's not a, a division of plants. It's not a plant. So I know I can hear some of you thinking, so why don't you just cut through the middle there? You'll be right there. It's not the same plant. These are two different specimens, two different, entirely different plants, entirely different root systems. Look where I'm going through here. And you can't cut through like you're separating agaves or yuccas or dietes or whatever else that multiplies upon itself and creates a lot of pups. These need to be... Uh, carefully separated and come closer now you can see what's happening here have a look see the trunk there of the olive trees running all the way down to here so this was buried down so there's the root ball down here look right below so it was buried this much deeper and it started to grow roots along the stem here see that so you can bury your trees a lot deeper and this is not a grafted variety it doesn't feel like it is so now we can see we can separate it so if you bury your trees a bit deeper they'll end up growing roots from where the soil contacts the stem or the trunk. Um, and that's with every plant, really. Here we are, there's your olive tree. I did break a little branch off just then. Did you hear that last crack? There it is there, spewing. There, that was part of that part there, that's okay. So we're gonna repot that. You can see now that was in a large pot. It doesn't need to go in a large pot. You don't wanna put that into a large pot. It's gonna drown, because it's gonna have too much soil around it. Now let's have a look at the uh, fig, what's left. We lost a bit of roots there. We don't know where they belong to. It could be in the fig or the olive, doesn't matter. Get them all off, you know. And when you do damage some of the roots, you know, if you lose part of the roots, always compensate by printing back down the top part of the plant. So this one's pretty good. There's not a lot up here. Have a look. There's a little bit of growth up there. If I'm gonna put this in the ground and I want it to stem out of it, a trunk, I want it to grow from about waist height. And for that to happen, folks, I can't have all this above. If I leave all this here, the energy is gonna go straight to the tip and keep growing above this, so we've got to take that off. So we get our secateurs, a little bit of a Windex on it, and then we cut. And we cut to any bud, really, any angle. That there, no, 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 means don't throw them out. Look, two more plants, simple as that. You can use, uh, what do they call it? Rooting hormone powders and liquids, we've got that on our website. Do that, do that, or do what I think his name is Vincenzo. This is the other trick you can do. See what I'm doing here? I'm taking, I'm ring barking it. 
See all that? Yeah, I'm really rough with it. That's right. I'm going to be rough with it. I want to be rough. Taking about an inch, just under an inch of the bark off, all the way around like that. The bottom half, damage. Do the same with this one here. And once you've done that to the both of them, they can go straight into a pot. With cocoa pith, if you like, straight. You know what? I'm going to stick these straight into this compost. I've seen these things growing out of compost bins. You know, twigs thrown in there. So hit the bottom like that. Let's get a couple of six inch pots. I think that's all we need. One here. Potting. Two. Like that. And these are pretty resilient plants. Normally I say to you punch a hole with you know a stick or something like that to get to the bottom of it. Just in case you've got a lump in there like I have in here. <laughs> One second, let me get it out. There it is. <laughs> Cookie. That's compost for you folks. Oh, it's inoculating all the microbes. Let me get some fresh stuff. There we go. Like that there. Now stick your finger in, make sure it's nice and loose. Pop that in like that. Again, I haven't got the rooting powder here folks. Or the gel. But it's always good to dip it in. Try some honey. People think I'm nuts when I say honey. Others swear by it. You work it out for yourself. I'm using some of this sandy loam on top. There we are. Um, yeah, a little bit of superfood. Like that. You can't burn them. We've done the trials. It proves that you can't burn them. You don't have to use so much, but if you've got plenty of it, why not? And give them a feed with a weak solution of liquid gold and eco butch. I'm not going to bring them in front of you. Look, I forgot the black grid. Let's put some black grid on it too. Quick one on black grit, calcium infused phosphate, yes it is. Does it reduce your uh, pH level? Does it raise your pH level, sorry? Reduce, reduces the acidity, yes it does. Can you use it on gardenias, azaleas, camellias and rhododendrons? Yes you can, and now I've been listening to a lot of people um, emailing and calling through saying that they've tried it on the roto, it hasn't worked. Um, black grit, you don't use it on its own. It's designed to be a soil amendment fertiliser. It actually enhances your plant's ability to take up other macronutrients that become unavailable to them because of other reasons in the soil. And I won't go into the details of it. All it does is it, it unlocks the gateway to the earth below, the soil below where your plants live in. So when you use this in conjunction with a quality compost, you know, a quality fertiliser, organic fertiliser, it's the best combination. On its own, it works a treat as well. It provides a calcium phosphate. So on roadies, yes, it will work, but using it on its own, it's not enough because you still need to give it the acidities and the other, you know, acid-loving nutrients that roadies require. But you want to make sure that you don't over-fertilise those by using black grit. So, you know, when it says put a handful of roto, and I know uh, fertiliser on a roto, and I know many of us get a bit excited, we put more than a handful, we put two or three handfuls. You know, that's okay when you want to feast, feast on it, but when it's a fertiliser that can possibly burn your plants, that's a risk. But when you put the black grid onto it, like this stuff here, you shouldn't be burning your plants. It would not burn your plants. It designs to balance the release of nutrients so it doesn't overfeed and doesn't underfeed. Black grid is available everywhere uh, online. I'm going to finish potting up my fig tree. This is too small. I'm going to get a 10 inch pot and I'm going to finish my olive tree as well. And that seems a bit too small as well. So both need a next size up. In the meantime, you can go to our website, vasiliesgarden.com. Check everything out there. It's on special every day of the week from Eva Silly. Maresi, and enjoy your garden, folks. Really go out there and embrace it. Barefoot too. It's grouse. Yes, us folks, the Yarra Valley Plant Fair and Garden Expo is on this month, 23rd and 24th of April. Write it in your diary, book your tickets online, come down and say hello. Stephen Ryan's going to be there, I'm going to be there, talking all things about gardening, giving you all the advice we can, and a heap of stall holders, plants, garden tools, products, food, lots of entertainment. Come down and say hello, 23rd, 24th, Yarra Valley Plant Fair Garden Expo. It's all on this month. From Eva Silly, Maresi, see you there.